Sweet. Bro, I'm in equity raising mode. Yeah, right seriously. Now. Like, yeah, got, you're you're taking it seriously. I got it. What I time can you meet? Timeline. 8 a.m. Yeah. When can you meet? Yeah. 8 a.m. Really? Um, yeah, no problem. Well, you know what? If guys Anywhere, are serious anytime, about about anything, you know, they show commitment. Like That's right. if you're serious about watching this channel, you subscribe. Commit. You press the like button. How? You do some commenting, you know, you take part. Please. I mean, if you're not serious, then go ahead. Do what you got to do. You know, I think I but, figured it out. I think they're trying to keep it to themselves. This this tight little family we've got here on the show. Nobody wants to let anyone no else wants to know. Share. No one wants to share. But if you do want to share, yeah. then do us a favor. If you're nice like TK. Hit the exactly. like. Let us, let us go. So we're asking you. Begging. You. Pleading. Have you subscribed? Why not? Just so we got it. a good we got a good show lined up today. I think we should just oh. get them on and and get ready. So much stuff to yeah, talk there's about. There's limited Holy time and let's macaroni. make it happen. Macaroni, let's Absolutely. do this. Absolutely. Very, very happy. I think, you know, we made a mistake last time when we had him on because we had other people on the panel. That wasn't a mistake. That was a great show. It was a great show, but we, yeah. I, I think everybody just needed more Vince Gaetano. This is also true. Right? I mean, how, how, I don't know how much we can handle. We're going to see how much We're Vince find Gaetano out we can yeah. handle. Hey. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Welcome. Fantastic. We're we're rolling right into the show today, Vince. We got we're we want to make sure we get as much from you as we possibly can. You know, we gotta edit we'll those sound bites. Squeeze every ounce out of this thing. Right? Gotta market to the masses. I'm gonna try to be on my, on my best behavior today. Oh, oh you're on the wrong no, show for okay. that then. Yeah, forget about it. We don't want we that. we, we gotta get an intro here, right? So Vince, I mean, last time we had you on the show, we had a bunch of other mortgage guys on. And if anyone wants to check out that um Daryl will post a link in the uh, in the comments, right where he's pointing. But guaranteed, it's not in that location. There's going to be a, find a, a link to there. the last video we Maybe. saw. Him. And uh, what I was impressed with Vince is the reaction from all these other, you know, you know, seasoned mortgage professionals who've got good reputations online. And when they were here in the room with you, they said Vince Gaetano. They said, "Wow, what does he have to say?" And uh, yeah. you know, what what are your creden credentials, Vince? How long you been in the mortgage business? Where do you operate? And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your company, All Mortgage. Oh, boy. Uh, I've been around a long time. Uh, started out uh, late 80s working in uh, uh, Canada Trust while in university, then uh, headed off to TD Bank, got into the mortgage department there um, in the early 90s. And um, remember when they were separate companies, Canada Trust they were, and TD they Bank? Were. And um you know, my career started in the uh, going out with the National Recovery Unit, meeting bailiffs at uh, doors um, as the market just tanked. People were walking into branches, dropping off keys. Oh, it wasn't wow. a fun time, but it did expose me to uh, the ugly part of mortgage lending and um, spent time at TD, ended up starting up the broker unit at uh, BMO in the, the late 90s and then um, joined my biggest client at the time, who was Norlight Financial Services, probably the largest mortgage broker at the time in Canada, and helped them grow, um, got on the mortgage side, and then started up my own uh, operation, joined up with a, a gentleman to get Monster Mortgage going, and then um, a few years ago, mm. sold that and uh, wanted to do something new and go in a new direction with our mortgage. Beautiful. Monster, right. So you got the, yeah, you got the the history behind you, which is why There's when guys are talking, yeah. right? Yeah. Vince, Vince Gaetano, you know, he knows what he's talking about because. Yeah. It's 30 years, right? So 30 years, you learn is. a couple of things, <laughs> right? If you're the persistent. Different, the different markets, right? I mean, right now we're going through something that 90 something percent of mortgage people just haven't dealt with. They just haven't gone through this. And so those calls they're getting for the first time, they're thinking, geez, what do I tell these people? Yeah, well, it, it, this isn't something I haven't seen before. It's um, it's quite troubling this time around because I think 
the lack of understanding of what can happen just isn't there, both uh, by homeowners and the professionals themselves that are serving them. And, um, you know, that's just a dangerous uh, cocktail um, when uh, people aren't given uh, a full perspective of what can happen. And, uh, you know, I've said this many times before, you know, the stress test uh, when it came out was vilified by, by our industry, uh, both realtors, both uh, lenders, you know, they thought it was unfair. And uh, when you look back on it, it could very well be the unsung hero in all this. And mm -hmm. um Interesting how that worked, isn't themselves. it? Yeah, Aussie. Almost like they, they, they knew something was lending. coming. Huh. Yeah, like maybe. Thought. Yeah. Okay. But well, but hold on. Did did you or anyone you know ever like ever imagine a scenario where they raised this intensely this fast? No, like anyone who 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 predicted the pace of these hikes would just be bullshitting you, right? Um, you know, I, How do you I prepare thought, for that, though? Like, who could be ready for this crazy smack? I really thought there would be three to four hikes uh, last year. And I based my assumption um, or my prediction on the fact that in March 2020, we saw 150 basis point drop, or, uh, you know, three, hike, three drops of 50 basis points in one month to try to help folks out during that that you know, the, the onset of COVID. So I really thought that the initial hikes would have brought those hikes back. Those drops would, have, those initial drops would have right. been given back to the market back to zero, and, yeah. and we get back to, you know, the two, um, what was it? We were, at, uh, I think we're at 395 uh, and then we artificially dropped it down to 245, which is the, the retail prime, right? So I really thought we'd get back to 395 quite quickly, but I, I wouldn't think that they go this hard. Um, but inflation just got a hand. The stimulus packages that were doled out were just excessive. And mm -hmm. um, listen, we saw the savings rate go up to uh, 27%, unprecedented. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw credit card debt drop from 90 billion down to 73 billion during COVID. And now it's back up to 93 billion again, right? So, you know, yeah. savings rates are dropping, credit card uh, usage is up. This is a perfect storm for a disaster. And, um, you know, if people aren't looking at those numbers and, and, and a little bit concerned, I'm not sure what to tell them. And what do you take from this week's announcement? So here we are, it's uh, the weekend of the 11th and 12th in March. This week, uh, we had a, an announcement from Bank of Canada uh, that put a pause on on the rate hikes. So what what can we tell from that announcement this week? Like, how does the Bank of Canada view the economy, the market, the the resilience of of consumers, or the effect of the previous rate hikes that they've already made? Well, I, I think the Bank of Canada is influenced a little bit uh, by both the Feds and uh, the bankers to a degree. Um, you know, we saw some some uh, data come out from CIBC where you're seeing $72 billion of their portfolio just in a shit show with mm -hmm. uh, amortizations in excess of 30, 35 years, just ridiculous numbers. Yeah. No and, no interest paid on on payments and yeah, uh, it, principles it, are growing. That's just crazy. bizarre, just yeah. bizarre from a risk perspective. And, uh, you know, Tiff uh, let the cat out of the bag when he, when he indicated that there's going to be a pause. What's interesting, though, is um, I think the next day or that afternoon, Carolyn Rogers, the deputy governor, was in Winnipeg, and she made it very clear that uh, the pause is conditional. Um, and, you know, that tells me we're in we're probably in for some hikes coming down the road. Conditional upon financing. <laughs> Pretty much. So but, yeah. you know, the data points are ugly. And uh, I think people just got to be fully understanding of the fact that this is going to be a long road and these things don't fix themselves in a quarter or two. Uh, it could take a couple years and things are going to break. Some people are going to be sad and, um, you know, it's going to be ugly. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, 
tighten the chin strap on the helmet. It's going to be bumpy. It's so, going to be a long road. And so how do we have all these, you see the banks now releasing reports, like the bottoms here, or almost like it's just around the corner. Yeah. Like it's it, like, and you feel that whole narrative is shifting right now to like, we're at the bottom all of a sudden and like maybe good times are here again. But I mean, how the fuck can that be possible? Well, I will say this, you know, there's a, a large chunk of the population that have no mortgages. And there's also a large chunk that uh, rent and are pretty happy renting right now because they know they're insulated from any hikes of not more than two and a half percent. So, you know, there, there's a there's a bunch of people sitting pretty and that those sentiment meters that you see from time to time on what Canadians think are going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's probably uh based on those folks <laughs> so you know right. for the first time seniors are earning something on their savings right like these are the forgotten folks that you know had a pile of cash and made zero but didn't from, their, from, from didn't their, their bank. portfolio just get obliterated first yeah but yeah so their portfolio got obliterated but now you can have four and a half percent easy there you go yeah so you know it's an interesting time uh but i do believe that the folks that bought during covid and the folks that are renewing right now and there's quite a few of them uh i think the estimates at 1.1 million people renewing their mortgages in 2023 and in most cases their debt servicing cost is going to more than double, maybe two and a half times what they were originally paying. So, you know, that's concern. We have 36% of mortgages and variables. We have 45% of non-mortgage debt and HELOCs. And in a 12-month period, all those costs of, of interest costs are going up to maybe three times. What percentage was HELOC? 45% of all non-mortgage related debt. And hold on a sec. How much is credit card debt? Like those are basically the same bloody thing, aren't they? Yeah, but the, the line of credit, the HELOCs fall under the line of credit uh, bucket, right? They're not traditional mortgages. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're under a different silo in, in these banks. So they fall under the non-mortgage debt. So it's going to be really interesting to see how those three buckets survive mm -hmm. and when you have a you know an average mortgage of five six hundred thousand these folks's debt costs are going up 20 grand a year that's not fun mm -hmm. and, no um where are they getting the money we're seeing savings rates plummet we're seeing credit card utilization go up so they're scraping by and i think once we hit second quarter third quarter we're going to start seeing some blood in the streets we're seeing folks uh, put up their hands. They can't do it anymore. I had a yeah. chap call me, uh, was it Thursday? Um, you know, lives in Woodstock, has a home worth 710, has a first with home trust at 585, paying 8% because he just renewed it. He's got a second for 70. So he's in the ditch for 670, right? Was it six? Yeah, 670 on 710. He's almost upside down after real estate fees. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's paying fifty two hundred a month in payments. Oy. Right. And he only makes 90 grand household income. Who gave him that so, fucking second? That bastard. Right. So the reality is, is he goes, Vince, can you help me? I said, you know, what can, what can, should I wait till next year? I said, how the hell are you going to get to next year? Yeah. How are you going to wait? Mm -hmm. Right. You're upside down. You got to eat like. What are you going to live off water and, mm -hmm. and paint chips off your wall? Like it's not going to work. So why don't you just sell? You might be able to get more than 710 because there's not enough listings. You know, lick your wounds, start over. You probably rent the place for three grand, 3,500 bucks in, in Woodstock. He's commuting to Ancaster, so he's consuming gas, got a car. Mm. It's a shit show. And, and that's one example. Yeah. People's yeah. pride, people's pride, I think, is is going to get in the way. Yeah, right? Canadians and, and... are just too proud with this home ownership stuff, and they just don't want to give in. They keep going, I'll, I'll just borrow it, and maybe it'll be better. Where you look at it and you go, no, 12 months ago, you shouldn't have borrowed. You shouldn't have taken that second. You should have sold, licked your wounds, like you said, and then repositioned yourself to be okay. But like everybody the, these just folks wants to are, own a home. These folks are being 
told uh, they're they're given a narrative that things are going to improve in a year okay mm -hmm. and you know the guy's asking he must ask four or five times well what do you think's going to happen next year like what do you think like do you think my value could go up that i could refinance and i said listen the only fucking thing i could guarantee you is that i'm going to be a year older next year and so <laughs> are you. like that's it yeah like that there's there's no guarantees nobody yeah. knows where this thing's headed yeah and all I know is it's going to take a while. It's going to take a very long time. And it's not months. I think it's going to be years. What well, is the Bank we're of in Canada saying, though? Like Dara was alluding to there. Like They're like, yeah, well, target inflation rate, you know, Q3. This, like, why are they even talking like this to be able to give people the hope of that? Well, I just read this morning that the, the Fed down south is having an emergency meeting on Monday. Okay. Oh, you think it has anything to do with these bank failures well, going on? <laughs> I don't know what it is. But talk about that, this. That's a concern. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for our dollar if they keep continue to hike? Uh, like I, I do appreciate that this is a, a a mini banking crisis that's causing these markets to go a little bit sideways the last 24, 48 hours. But I don't think it's going to get better. Oh, how could it get better? This is right. So I don't know. Bananas now what these banks are projecting uh the bedroom communities are going to get hammered i think toronto the core will be fine like you know i was looking at the stats off off of peak of last year you know toronto's only down 11 and a half percent right and and then a half off peak tk that's our that's our stat everybody's right using our off stat peak. now it's okay don't worry you got you hey, I that, keep that stat okay. last year yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, and we did it two years sure you did. Yeah, yeah and toronto west <laughs> and toronto center are holding their own toronto east is a shit show right they're down 17 points and probably 17. Right. We're down mm -hmm. where am i tk am i west am i central where am i you should be central where so what are we down 11 took, but i took a nice little ride up first right yeah. Can I count that? Can I fucking count that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah, but, so I mean, I, mean, a, I, I agree with you, right? Is, is is at the end of the day, we're we're lo location. The fundamentals of the markets will return. So you know, location they, will be. Aren't they here? Like, isn't everybody talking like the market's bananas right now, and we're in a, either a bull trap or a dead cat bounce, or we're back, baby? It's got to be one of those. No, there's act. There's action out there. Let me tell you. I, I think we're closer action. to a dead cat bounce than than yeah, back yeah. to market. Like there's no price discovery yeah I'll, I'll give you a, a story um situation you know we have a mick and um we, we help out folks and and um we had a situation where clients bought last year 1.3 uh million east Gwillimbury, and uh, the first lender we're in second the first lender goes out and does an assessment they offered the guy a renewal um and they they opted to do a CMA and another appraisal. Take a look and see what their LTV is. So they don't use the original original appraiser who did the, the deal. They went somewhere else and, and they asked the realtor to, to appraise this thing. Now there's no there's no listings, there's no sales, there's no price discovery. So they they said, well, this place is only worth a million fifty. Right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to renew. Unless this guy gives us, you know, 155 grand, whatever the number was. And I'm like, guys, really? Like, guys paying as agreed. You got three people on title, hardworking folks. Why would you not renew it? You've already issued the renewal. And now you're going to pull it back because your appraiser who's fucking scared of a shadow is going to tell you it's only worth a million fifty. So anyways, long and the short of it, you know, they forced the guy to sell. So mm. he lists it and he gets a million two, three. Yeah, of course. All right. So here's a lender that's, you know, gun shy and forces a paying borrower who's willing to even, who's willing to tap in 30, 40 grand showing his commitment to this home. They force them to sell. And they were off the mark 170 grand, 80 grand. Like the exact amount that it was supposed to be is what it yeah. sold for. Right. Right. So when you start seeing stuff like that happen in the marketplace that has no bearing on the outside forces, right? This is internal decisions. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And I'm sure that's not the only one. 
So how do you avoid that though? I mean, the people that, that it's, it's their money. Like they want it back. They're afraid. They, they see what's going on. And like, listen, if you go and you talk to some pretty smart people, they're saying, Hey, like get, hold on to cash right now. Now's a pretty good time to have a whole pile of cash. If you're smart, right? It is. But I, I think it's one thing, you know, I'm, I'm a big boy. I understand credit. You know, you lend out money, you're charging a premium for default. Like there, there's a, there's a, there's a, a danger premium in there for getting involved in this transaction. That's where I think a lot of these private lenders have no clue what- This is the problem. The, the private problem. lenders, it's where is the money coming from that's exactly. being lent out? Because if you're dealing with like a family office that's got like billions of dollars and they don't give a shit, right? It's one thing. But when you have a million phone calls a day going, get me my money back, like my line of credit's going crazy. Like you got to give me my money back. I'm losing money every month here. Well, this is a larger operation, right? They're, you know, they're mm. out West and you know, I don't want to disclose who they are because, you know, it's, I'm not very fond of the situation, but the reality is, is they force somebody out of their home that I think they prematurely um, force the guy to do it. Like, I, 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 listen, I don't agree with it. I, I respect their position, but the reality is, is when you have that type of stuff happening and people haven't even defaulted yet. Mm -hmm. I don't even do where the we consumer going? Yeah, doesn't Jesus. understand that they they don't understand that the different terms between the a lenders and the private and at the end of their term they might get a notice that says i don't care how well you've paid these payments we want our money back and they yeah and and the concern is you know when when you have a situation like this and, and you know talking to the clients it was it was tough right because they're like well vince can you find me something else and and you know i'm dealing with their broker and their brokers trying to figure out what we could do and i'm like well if this is what the appraisers are telling you it's worth, who's going to lend you money? And if they do, it's going to be higher and more expensive than you think. So you so, can't trust the appraisers on the way up. You can't trust them on the way down. Like, what the fuck do we rely on them so heavily for? What is this crap? I had an appraisal come back. The due diligence requirement, right? Yeah, I had an appraisal come back. I just found out what the appraisal, the, the appraisal happened a few weeks ago, but I just found out that it came back at the asking price and everybody was in agreement that this property was not worth what the client paid and it was like even negotiated before we got the results of the appraisal like well we know that they've overpaid and these are the terms that we should change and yada 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 and the appraisal i just found out this week actually came in because the appraiser said well that's what they needed it to come in at and i was just mm -hmm. like well Good, Can I get that guy's me, phone number, please? Not, uh, <laughs> like I'm looking at, I'm looking at February stats, right? Like the, Give me that the guy's market. number, TK. I will. The There's only 34 <laughs> transactions in all of East Gwillimbury. Mm -hmm. How many? 34, right? So, what type of price discovery is there? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Depending it's on the type of home. East yeah, Gwilmbury's and how many of those too. are similar homes? Could be a farm, right? could same be a, lots. You know, yeah, it could be a brand new build on a yeah. postage stamp lot. Yeah. It could be anything. So, to your yeah. point, right? From a, an appraisal perspective, how much water can it hold? Yeah. And this is it where it holds a lot, though. That's the problem. It holds so much. There, it's like a NIMBY. It's like right, like they hold so much more a purpose weight than to, they need to. There's a purpose for it, and that's what uh, that's what the appraisers are there for, right? AI could do the same job as appraisers it's an interesting time and, and i think what everybody's got to appreciate is you know we'll get through it it's going to be ugly but you know it's time to look at your budgets uh pull your bank statements pull your credit card statements and focus on the needs get rid of the wants mm -hmm. it's gonna be a grind and yeah. try to figure out how to get through the next 18 18 24 months but, the, but those are the end users. And I totally agree that the, the end users, I believe, will prevail because they're Canadians. They're proud of their homes. They're going to get a second job. They're going to cut back the craft dinner diet. They'll make it work. Yeah. It's the it's the investors that are the, the ones who screwed everything up. Like the guys I'm dealing with who have bought multiple properties over the last year or two are so bloody over leveraged from so many different lenders. And the LTVs are all like there's well, just there's no hope yeah. for them. Are they investors or are they speculators? They're, they're speculators. They're, they're greedy people who tried to make money in a market without any, like some of there them was, overpaid at the yeah. time. And then, you know, now it's even gone down further. The terms, I'm just looking at this going like, what was the plan? And there there's was multiple. Never, 
There was never a spreadsheet calls. that showed like never. prices going down and interest rates going up, right? Like that well, never There was existed. never a spreadsheet that showed that their purchase was a good idea. I well, there's care. two situations. I'll there was though. <laughs> there's two camps, right? There's the folks mm -hmm. that bought the high rise four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. They're still in the money, but they can't get their financing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the low rise that bought a year, year and a half ago that don't have any value there anymore and they yeah. were never so, planning on moving in and well <laughs> if they were they're they're gonna have to uh ask mom and dad or somebody to help them out right mm -hmm. and you know that's another story we'll get to that in a sec but you know the high-rise folks they're trying to just close close and try to get rid of the stuff so there's going to be a flood of property being sold in the marketplace on investor units that don't cash flow so mm -hmm. how 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 exciting is that from an investment perspective? Unless you're getting a really, really big discount. We're starting uh -huh. to see folks walk away some par from part of their down downstroke. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's no assignment market. Nobody's buying. Nope. And people want the GST. You got to come up with the GST. Mm -hmm. close. Yeah, but meanwhile, new launches are selling like, Great. This LSQ thing. Everybody's talking about how unbelievable it's sold for. Yeah, but they're, they're projecting North Core condos in North four or five York. years, right? So yeah. they don't need to find a solution for four or five years. It's the people oh who need solutions this year. Down the road. But, yeah. but, but it's like we're, we're, tr we're learning the lesson as we speak. Like we're, yeah. we're learning it real time and people are still lining up like it's the old trade floors at the stock market going, hey, I'll take six, I'll take four, pre, go, pre, go, go. Pre-con freeholds too. This, what the this, fuck uh, is this going week on? In, in Durham region. Line and, up know, the door. I, I don't know why nobody's learning from this. Like, I, I, I think <laughs> we're it's in just it. greed. It, it has to be just greed. Just greed. Yeah. just greed yeah. everyone wants to make I a have quick no buck. sympathy for those folks like i you know what they asked me what what i could do and it's probably gonna be private or alternative and you know if 12 gonna percent oh. it's gonna be ugly it's yeah. gonna be ugly. and it's a temporary solution you know your interest only payments you got renewal fees like I've never seen a private mortgage that was not other than like really creative financing that somebody knew what they were doing because there was there's a there's a play involved. But on the residential side, it's a temporary solution. There is no so you let know, me, you, you, you're dead on. But let me give you this example. OK, and I use this a lot. One Yorkville is completed and built. And they, they have a few units left over. If you're an investor, right, you could pick up a completed unit ready to go. For about fifteen hundred dollars to sixteen hundred dollars a square foot, in Yorkville, one York, cheap at one Yorkville today, anyways. At eighteen Yorkville, it's still under construction, and they're selling units for twenty five hundred dollars a square foot. Whoa! Right. So, Whoa. explain to me why an like a true investor would buy one Yorkville. I, I've been You're saying it forever. Like, right. but, I'm, but I, I produce is, these units. Why do people not just buy something that's built right now and rent because it? The, because the speculator they doesn't want, want lift. to carry the cost. They want the they lift. Want, they just want the lift and they want to sell in the assignment market. Right. And this is where uh, this market is troubling. Right. Because when you have two fucking units side by side and you could make an ROI of a thousand bucks a square foot on a completed unit. Yeah. Why wouldn't you buy that one? Yeah. Because yeah. you have to start paying right away. So people don't have the cash flow. They can't qualify for the credit. So and they're it's kicking easy the can money, down the road. Right. Well, it's easy money. Yeah. But I, I don't think it's going to be easy anymore. I think these one bedroom units are going to be uh, a mess. I don't think anybody wants them anymore. And, and let's call a spade a spade. You know, that shooting up in Vaughn with uh, the condo owner shooting the um, the board members. Check out our episode on that one that nobody watched. Um, there was a flood of resignations from boards following that. These that, volunteer positions. Yeah. Nobody wants to be on these boards anymore because they're yeah. saying, holy shit, this could happen. 
I yeah. put out a tweet the next day. Do you remember? Did you see it? I put out a tweet the next day and I said, flood of condo board, uh, like everybody's quitting. And it was satire, right? And everybody was like, how dare you say there, that? It's there bullshit. Was a, and of there course was a there was going to be. It's not there worth was. being on one of these boards. So now you're, you're, probably gonna incent, you're probably going to have to incent folks to, to run or, or be part of it or mm -hmm. outsource it. That's going to cost money. Fees are yeah, going to yeah. go up, and it's going yeah, to put yeah. a bigger dent in the in the ROI, right? So I I don't know. I, I, it's an interesting time. I, I think we all we'll all get through it. It's not going to be fun, but we're trying to help folks out understand their position, and how to get through it, and give them some tips and strategies. And just what are you, what are you telling people though? I mean, someone calls you and says, "Look, Vince, I can't afford my my mortgage anymore," and uh... I don't want to sell, you know, like, how do you deal with that? Well, we encourage them to sell, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it to make money, right? I'm mm -hmm. a broker. Like if they don't fund the mortgage, I make zero, but mm -hmm. the good, but, but what I will do is I'll tell them the truth, right? Um, if they're looking for something that they just want to hear, they're not going to hear from me. It, it, it's, it's dire. It's numbers. You got so much coming in. And you got so much coming out. When you run out of money before you run out of month, it's a problem, right? Yeah. And, you know, going back to this transfer of wealth, you know, for, for years, for years, all the banks, everybody's, all the economists are talking about this transfer of wealth from one generation to the other. It's not going to be a windfall anymore. It's going to be a relief package, <laughs> right? People are going to get this transfer of wealth and they're going to be, you know, they're going to get a sigh of relief saying, fuck. I get to get rid of all my debt. Mm. It's not going to be a windfall because people are needing. It's going to be a reset. Yeah, it's just going to be a reset. Mm. The so, great reset, maybe? <laughs> you know, people are just sitting there waiting for an inheritance to get them out of a jam because they've spent it all. They lived it up. And it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best to, to try to help folks through it. And, uh, you know, we got to show a lot of empathy. The calls are longer. There's people, um, you know, they're emotional basket cases and, and you just got to hold their hand and help them. You know, how, do you, how do you prevent this? Like, so now there's new people coming into the market always, right? You're attracting first time buyers and, and, and different people looking to upsize their mortgage to improve their lifestyle. Like, how do you coach them to make better decisions but hold on and these are not even people that made bad like these are not people that got laid off and made bad decisions like some of these people are just up for like a renewal on a house that they had 25 percent down in no well you know daryl uh, and and uh, tk the the folks that are renewing from 2018 they have the benefit of having equity in their homes right they you know they didn't buy at the top you know, they bought for six, 700 grand. They're now looking at a home worth over a million. They probably have 480, 500 grand owing. It's not that bad. They got half a million dollars in equity. It's the folks that bought during um, COVID or, or the last year that are really the ones suffering, right? They're, they're looking at rates. First of all, they're all in the alternative space because they've taken one-year terms. And those folks that took those variables that got triggered, well, that's another story. But those are the folks that are going to be struggling, right? They're, they're going to be looking at answers, looking for answers on what do I do next? And in some cases, it's you don't have enough income to support the lifestyle anymore. Like when you go from, you know, $2,600 in payments to over five grand. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like you didn't even lose your job money? and now you're losing your house. It's like crazy. It used to be, you know, you... You were 55, the economy got worse, you got laid off, and now, shit, honey, like, I got to sell the house, right? I, we're not going to be able to afford it. Now it's like, I still have my job. Like, I'm going to renew. It's going to suck. Making more they go, money than ever. shit, you, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to you renew what? with me? Now I got to go yeah. find a mortgage in three weeks or something? Like, what the fuck is going on? What, you told but, me you were renewing. What like, about the big banks? So on that point, Daryl, like the big banks, I mean, they're they're all renewing no matter what. But like when someone legitimately can't afford those new payments, what does an A lender do? I mean, my understanding is that the A lender has no option but to but to well, renew. The let I, I will say this: if you are proactive and you are showing 
uh, evidence that you really want to stay in your home, lenders will work with you. They have tools in their basket where they could extend amortizations. They could help you out. You know, we're seeing 40-year amortizations on a regular right. basis where they're stretching people just mm -hmm. to keep them in their home. Like yeah. banks don't want, they're not in the business of, of power sailing people. Okay. The, the, if, you, if you hide your situation, you're living it up. They're not going to have a lot of sympathy for you. They're not advertising this sort of stuff because people will take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And they are working with people on a one-off basis. And I've seen some, some situations where we've helped folks with their renewal, where banks are in fact, giving them a hand, okay. um, especially folks that, you know, have been on biweekly accelerated payments They've they've uh, chewed up some of their amortization off the top, and now they've gotten into this position. They got some room, right? They mm -hmm. they they do have the ability to extend it for folks that, you know, they look through their banking statements. You know, are they driving two Land Rovers? Are they living it up? Are they on vacation all the time? Well, they're not going to help them out. But if folks are truly uh, in a situation where maybe somebody's on mat leave. They're down, you know, a, a half an income because EI won't cover the full thing. So give them a hand. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I ask people all the time, if you're in trouble, ask for help. Be proactive. Don't hide from lenders when they're calling you. You know, be forthright with your situation. You'd be surprised at the response you'll get. There are good people in banks that will help. And you just got to find the right people in the avenue to do it. And don't feel like it's uh, there's going to be a shaming. You know, that you're not alone. You're not the first. You're not the last. And you just got to try to do your best to, to stay in your home if you can. Otherwise, cut your losses. So, and, and we're having this conversation while unemployment numbers are like ridiculous, right? Like there's more job. They keep guessing the job's way lower. Like a good guess is half off right now. Like this is insanity. People are no, getting hired all, all over. I, I, I think there's unintended consequences all the time. You know, I... I I like looking at data points. I like looking at like drilling down into the weeds. And, and I attribute these labor numbers to the announcement made on November 15th uh, when the government allowed non-permanent resident students the ability to work more than 20 hours a week. Okay. There was a major problem taking place um, with students trying to, to live and pay for their accommodations and they just couldn't do it they're working for cash under the table they're putting in really difficult situations being um you know uh not treated very well exploited so they lifted that 20 hour cap and all of a sudden in november everybody was surprised in december everybody was surprised with the labor numbers like they were it was tenfold the prediction but it's now, amazing that we need to hire all these people isn't it it's amazing and, that these students have so much time to be working more than 20 hours. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, What's but going these on are, with these, these students? Are joke, these are joke colleges, right? Like yeah. it's 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 the it's the way it's a turnstile to get your permanent residence, right? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. portals into the country. Come on, yeah, like yeah. Uh, let's call a spade a spade. We're we're starting our own school for entry. But where's all the abroad. work? We we've got a Canadian real estate show uh, training program, and we'll uh, fill out those forms. Message Daryl. But are we the ones hiring them too? Like who the hell, like where are all these jobs? Does, does the retail like all, need that many more employees right now? Does the service need that Food many Food services more? is dying for, for employees. There's not yeah. one restaurant that I know that is comfortable with the amount of staff that they have. Dental hygiene. But they're hygienist. also letting people go. Like it's like a big churn. It's like you're getting rid of all the idiots as you hire more idiots exactly. right now, right? Yeah. But that doesn't increase the number. That kind of keeps it static. But so, but like, again, who's hiring all these people? Like tech is getting killed everywhere. Who, who's hiring? Are you hiring? No, seriously. I We're don't know hiring. anybody. We're hiring. Guys, yeah. yeah I mean, but you guys hiring. are hiring because you're a transactional business. You need to get more of the pie and it doesn't really cost you more to have somebody else on board. Yeah. Right. It's all commission based. I've, everybody commission based is hiring like crazy, but who the fuck wants that job right now? Maybe some realtors, maybe. It's scary, man. Imagine being a new realtor right now, being the bottom rung on the on the team. What the hell are this you getting? A, this is how you. This is not how even you an open house. Cut to your go teeth. To. These type of markets. This is uh, the market that you want to start in. Absolutely. absolutely. My poor yeah. daughter. Yeah. What did I get her into? God. Yeah. 
What about mortgages right now too? I mean, the mortgage business, is the volume at down like the same way or is it because of the renewals? This is like a good thing for mortgage brokerages that they're going to be doing more business this year. How you know what? Work? I was anticipating things would be slower, but they've actually been busier and they're busier with problems. Folks uh, needing refinancing, uh, people, a lot of people dealing with renewals. As I mentioned, you know, people whose condos are closing, needing assistance to close these things. How does that translate into volume, though? It 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 is. We're busier. We're, we're volume ahead, wise. We're ahead huh? of last year. Wow. We're up about 23, 25 percent. Um, and but it's it's tougher business. It's just mm -hmm. um, a grind. We're we're moving down the scale. You know, I always talk about graduation and rehabilitation. We should be moving from private to alternative, alternative to prime, right? Instead, we're seeing everything go backwards. We're going prime to alternative, alternative to private, and private to private, you know, and that's not a good sign. And that's yeah. those are people just hanging on, right? Hoping that their equity will, will get them through the day. And it's not always the best decision, but some people are just stubborn and they think things are going to change. But you know, we're 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 dealing with appraisals not coming in, we're we're dealing with um you know, changing criteria, lenders are getting tighter, um, asking more questions. Uh, they want to know where money's coming from. You know, people are borrowing from parents and presenting it as gifts and they want validation that it is a gift. It, it's getting tougher. Uh, you know, every, every deal is a grind and it seems like there's three times the amount of effort going into every deal um, than you usually would uh, need. And, um, you know, a lot of that is dealing with expectation, right? People just can't see what's going on. And uh, it's almost like they got blinders on in some cases. And you're trying to, you know, explain to them that this, your your house isn't worth what you paid it. You know, like it, it's gone down and like, it's almost um, surreal to them to think about it because they never thought that that could happen. And I think they just, like I said, at the beginning of the show, you know, they just got bad advice and people weren't giving them the full um, picture of what could happen. And, you know, in the past, there's always a very low probability of markets coming down, but it, it, the risk is there. And if it's not presented to people and explained, um, you're not doing them any justice and, and, and helping them understand and, and properly assess the situation. So, you know, it, it's just a tougher business. You know, it's Saturday. I, I got to work and I got files I got to deal with. And it's, um, it is what it is. We'll, we'll get through it. We, you, you we think it 91, we'll do it again in 2023. You think because some of the guys, some of the guys probably had a lot more mortgage business than they were used to. So they weren't taking the same amount of time explaining everything, you know, to the, to the clients, right? So someone would come in and say, well, you know, we can't just we can't get the A lender, so we're going to go to B or we're going to go to some other alternative uh, lender and, and try to be able to make this work. And there just wasn't any real careful explanation. Right? I feel like that should be part of the, the mortgage professional's job, right, is to really explain this. Say, hey, by the way, at the end of this year, okay, this is what you're going to need to do re to renew. And if this ha doesn't happen or if this does happen, this is the position you're going to be. How are you going to deal with that? Right? Well, um. Listen, it's no secret you could become a mortgage broker by fog in a mirror, mm -hmm. right? So um, when you have a, a an easy barrier to entry, you're going to get some slugs, right? And I can't tell you how many folks have gotten investment properties and taken variable mortgages and are now surprised that they're cash flow negative. Yeah. Crazy. Right. So like that is a real problem. When you have both a novice thought, finding the financing, a realtor selling them something that's cash flow positive because you can only pay one and a half percent and letting that investor believe that that's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you put like like I said earlier, you put that cocktail together, it's just a fucking disaster. Right. When you know your rent is limited on how much it could go up. Why would you be in a variable mortgage on a rental property at the bottom of the market? And you have an opportunity to lock in as a buy and hold. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> burn. And, and listen, I get heat from realtors on this. Uh, yeah. I've, I've talked about it many times on my show. 
And yeah, you know, know. some some people want to debate debate with me. Let's go. Right? And it's like, are you serious? Like this is crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, tell me. If it's a qualifying, if it's a qualification issue where you're trying to get under that uh that that threshold to qualify, you can lock in the next fucking day. Right? It's free to lock in to a fixed rate when you're in a variable. Mm -hmm. Nobody did it. That's crazy that nobody did that. Right. And, and you know, these static payments, listen, I'm on record. I think it's the worst fucking product in the history of mortgages. And Aussie was asleep at the switch on that. Right. Mm -hmm. As soon as rates started moving up and we're, and, and they knew the bank of Canada dropped artificially 150 basis points in March. There was exposure there. Significant exposure. You're trying to cap all these amortizations at 30 years or whatever the fuck they, they call it at, you know, why would you know that the amortization is going to go beyond that cap when rates rise in a static payment environment? Yeah. At mm -hmm. least with the Scotia Bank crowd, they're getting a notification every time Bank of Canada goes up. Hey, your payment's going up. Here's a letter in the mail. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Right? And then it's it's they call me, Vince, my payment went up. What should I do? Well, I could lock in. Do you want to lock in? You want to stay the course, or you could increase your payment to the lock-in number and accelerate repayment. What when, do you think? When rates think, are going up and everybody's talking about rates going up, why the hell didn't everybody just lock in instantly? It's the delusion of of, of the what rates going back down. It was down like, oh, this further. Won't, this have... won't. This won't go up any further than what they did, or oh, it might go up a little bit, but you know what? It'll just end up going back down again. So I'll just hang on tight. But everybody should have realized it was going to go up to at least 395, right? Back to where it started before, prior to COVID, right? Like mm -hmm. that 150 basis points, you had to assume it was going to get back to that level at the very least. I think you're giving people too much credit. Yeah, not right? over. You're giving people too much credit that they would be able to, you know, well, their broker should have explained that to them for sure. And, but, and, and this is why yeah, I, I question... Why would you deal with a novice? Why would yeah, you yeah. deal with a rookie? Yeah. Because he's because on TikTok. Nice. No, yeah. He's, he's nice and they wear nice really clothes. Bro, he's in, the mortgage, in the mortgage business, it that really guy was make wearing sense at all a Rolex to... and he was driving a Rolls and he was like in these beautiful places on TikTok. Like I, I fell for it, man. Don't you get it? But this is what's happening. You have uneducated people coming for the dream, getting here. The dream is fucked and looking for the easiest way to get out of the Uber, right? The easiest way to get out of washing the dishes. And the, these are engineers. These are like people with doctorates. Like these are serious people that can't use their abilities here. They came here for a dream and the like it's, it's a disaster for them, right? It's, 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 now it's not, reality. It, life's reality. Easy, man. Yeah. And and everybody wants everything now. No one wants to be patient. Everybody wants to, you know, live it up. They want their their forever home right now. And it's gonna end badly for a lot of them that are over leveraged. Yeah. And they can't handle the success. That's what I've noticed the most in the last couple of years is the people who made more money spent just as much money extra that year <laughs> so like i had my best year ever and then they increased all their living expenses like i always thought that was like you know some people are like that but it's most people are like that you know as they made more money as their business did better as whatever they just started buying stuff because they're like now i can afford it and they started dressing nicer and driving nicer cars and all this kind of stuff i mean yeah. i'm in the real estate world so obviously i see i see this more often than most most places but it's like the biggest recipe for disaster i've ever because changing that lifestyle when your when your income has gone back down to where it normally was is very difficult, especially yeah. when you got a monthly payment on a five year term. And, and let's let's be very clear: like social media has changed the game, right? Like it's um, it's all about flash, it's all about instant instant uh, gratification. Um, you know, I, I've seen it firsthand with my son. You know, he's an influencer. Um, he's the one who kind of pushed me into social media when I didn't even know what it was. And, you know, seeing these young folks uh, function on that, that uh, channel and that, that medium is, is just shocking. 
It's just absolutely shocking. And yeah. the sense of reality is um, very, very fuzzy, right? Like there, it, it it's problematic. I think there's more cons to it than good. Yeah. And that, and that we had a girl on the show a couple of weeks ago. So she was in her 20s. She's a realtor. So we were kind of hoping that she would give us the right answer, which was that all her friends are all now, you know, share like having roommates and, 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 you know, living down their life, uh, uh, lifestyle and, and making sure that their expenses are, are kept at a minimal. And, uh, we didn't get the right answer. It was yeah. just like, no, people are, you know, dining at Harbor 60 and they're driving nicer cars and they all want a $3,000 a month condo and stuff like that. And it's auto just like, service at the yeah. club so next generation. Right. So now we got to start talking to the 10 year olds. They're the one, they're our hope. The 20 year olds, they're not, they're not there. But you know, it's interesting. I think people are going to get for forced to get there pretty fast. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. It's, it's interesting because my son, um, I think I told you this, Daryl, when we were on a phone call, but he's the one who told me to stop doing TV. Yeah. And he said, uh, Dad, you got to stop. I've been doing it for 19 years, right? So he goes, Dad, you got to stop doing this. I said, why would I stop doing TV? Like, it works. The phone rings, I think. And, you know, everybody's looking for me. And, and he says, well, Dad, nobody my age knows what a cable bill is. Everybody streams. Take your show on to social media. I said, well, how the hell do I do that? He goes, well, I'll show you. He bought me the light and, you know, the thing, put the phone in. And, yeah. and he goes, just talk to people like, you know, you do on the show. I said, yeah, but your age, like, why would you want to listen to an old guy? Right? Like, I got white hair for crying out loud. He goes, well, don't talk like a dad. He goes, lose your suit lose your tie and talk to us like you want to help us. And I'm like, I still don't get it. How am I going to connect with you guys? He goes, think of back to the future. Nobody my age knows or has the experience you have. So help us, help us learn how to save, help us learn how to buy a house. Mm. And, you know, uh, you know, he gave me some pointers and said, you know, just don't wear a suit. And don't be a dad and educate. And I think financial literacy, uh, everybody talks about it, nobody does it. And it's so important. These young folks need to understand uh, how to save. Uh, I think many of them are very good at it. And the ones that love to live a lifestyle they can't afford are, are posting pictures on social media. The bottle service that you talked about, the parting it up. That's not the reality, right? Every picture's uh probably taken 10 times to get the perfect one right lighting like it's it's almost a joke like why people have to post everything they eat all of a sudden doesn't make any sense to me right but just... and here we are all of us <laughs> it, well, it's there listen, it works think, this is I the think thing provide it works. Some value like, like i think you know if there's one thing i like about social media is that you get immediate engagement um People really need appreciate your your content, and they they want help, and they're sincere, and the the immediacy of it, the immediacy, it, and the varying opinions, and the different insights. Yeah, you know how many times helps. my mind has been blown just in like the comment section here, where it's been like, oh, yeah, it actually might be like that. That that's an interesting point. Holy cow, I never would have thought about that if it weren't for the comment section of this you know, ridiculous YouTube show. But I mean, I learned so much just by doing this and by being in touch with people like you and TK all the time, like on Twitter, like you get information before anybody has information. If you're following the right people, like there is, th th this is an age where if you use the stuff correctly, it can be a huge um, lever, like huge leverage Right. Because, I mean, it doesn't cost anything but our time. Right. And we all really know what our time's really worth. So it, it, there's not much of a cost to putting this stuff out there, but the returns can be exponential. But you could also fleece a lot of people if you were that kind of personality. Right. Well, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I feel 20 years younger doing this stuff on social media and uh, I'm learning every day. Um, you know, you go to, you listen to Twitter space, you're always picking up a couple nuggets of info if you're on the right ones. Yeah. And, um, you know, the social media 
that engagement for me is what lights my fire. You know, you you have people who reach out and they need help and and they're in trust they they want to trust you to to give them some help. Yeah. And I I have all the time in the world for them. Like after each of my shows, I'm on Instagram for at least 90 minutes to 2 hours responding to folks. It's crazy, yeah. And they appreciate it. And yeah. it, it may not necessarily uh, result in the transaction today, but, you know, I've had people that have reached out and said, you know, my buddy watches you all the time. He said, I got to call you yeah. mm-hmm. and can you help me out? And yeah. that's what I get the satisfaction from, you know, is people appreciate the content. They, they give me ideas to talk about. And it's so different from TV, which was so controlled. And you don't realize how controlled it really is until uh, you're at, right? But, like, I, mm-hmm. let's not even go years, there like, right now. Thing. And you then realize it's just a fucking clusterfuck. Oh, yeah, that's that. That's it's, how... it's an efficiency. So social media is an efficiency, right? TV. Yeah. I got to watch that guy. Okay, I've heard him now for ten minutes. Do I like it? Okay, I learned something. All right, that was worth it. All right, this guy now. I'm gonna watch that whole half an hour. I'm like, oh, you know what? I never really got what I wanted. But social media, it's like you got to just bounce around and you get the ideas from people, whether it be the Twitter space or YouTube or TikTok or however it is. But it means that you get to absorb information faster, pick and choose which one is more relevant. And then as the professional, you get to reach people in a, in a faster way. Like for you to talk, I don't know how many people you talk to in 90 minutes, but it's that's that's way less time than it would take you to have all those people come and see you at your office Correct. and talk to them or and give, them, give that same yeah. advice. And right? like same it's, fuzzy it's, feeling. It saved you a day's worth of work. Yeah. Right? And now and, you're and connected. The, the best advice I ever got was from my son who said, Dad, whatever you do, don't talk about mortgages. <laughs> mm, don't nice. talk about mortgages. He said, whatever you do, don't talk about mortgages. Nobody gives a shit about a mortgage. Well, it's so just, this, is a gr- this is a perfect segue because we would be remiss right now. And I would really love to get a bunch of views by putting this somewhere in the title and maybe making a short segment on it. But we have to talk about the bank failures in the States. Like we have to talk about Silicon Valley Bank because this is major. This is major. Like you cannot have a, 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 a top six, I think they were the 16th biggest bank in the United States that literally holds every Silicon Valley startups funds in it. Apparently all uninsured, not all, like only 93% uninsured. Like this is, this is major, isn't it? Or is this just like, it's going to go sweep under the rug, nothing happened here, no big deal. And actually, come to think of it, sorry, this was the second one in the last few days that went under, because there was another one called like Silvergate, not not so big, that also um, was in the news last week. I, I think what's surprising about this situation is what Janet Yellen said. Uh, I think yesterday, and she says, you know, you, you should be concerned about the regional banks. Like, why would somebody make a comment like that? Why would she, of all people, make like, a comment like, like that? That, that that I think is, oh. is that is that a clue <laughs> as to what's coming? More is coming. Like, yeah. Oh, this oh, is that's a the precursor. Silicon yeah. Valley's got they can afford to lose a little bit, right? But everybody's yeah. uh, bank account, Carol, if that's in trouble, I'm not going to suggest I I know. Um, what what caused it or whatever but you know a lot of these high tech companies are laying off um there's probably something they know uh and it just they 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 just lent too much money that wasn't being repaid i i don't know what the issue is but well it's similar to the housing crisis where it's like people were throwing money at companies that really didn't need that money but in order to invest in the company they had to throw an exorbitant amount of money at the company and then a company that really didn't have anything just started using the money to hire a bunch of people it didn't really need for jobs that weren't even really jobs because everybody was working from home or like remote. Nobody was doing anything. So they needed all these people. And then all of a sudden the conditions tightened up and it was like, Oh my God, our burn of like a hundred million dollars a month uh, is, is drying up. We need more money. And then they go out for more money and it's not there. Right. And so they end up where their valuations are coming down because they're trying to raise more money and all hell's breaking loose. And then, well, one, one thing's very clear is that, you know, uh, the Bank of Canada rate 
does impact more commercial facilities than it does residential mortgages. Okay, a lot of operating facilities, a lot of credit facilities are mm -hmm. all on Prime Plus. And we're seeing more and more businesses uh, file for insolvency. Uh, I don't know what the state's numbers are, but when you have your uh, variable rate or your prime rate go up as much as it has, it's going to cause damage in businesses. You know, these are folks that staffed up because of whatever supply issue uh, deficiencies. Uh, they're staffing up on cheap money. We're seeing prime ramp up for four and a half, 400 and 450 basis points. I don't know what it is in the, in the States. It's a lot more than here. And how do you pay that? Like that costs money. So you're seeing, you could see how businesses start falling when, when you see those rates go up as fast as they have um, in such a short time, like the cost to borrow, the cost of service, these operating facilities, inventory loans, whatever the hell it is, is just a huge, huge burn. And um, I, I think it's caught everybody off guard, including the banks. I don't think the banks anticipated them having to go up this fast. Well, I think one of the biggest issues with this Silicon Valley bank is that they had a bunch of money in treasuries and bonds, right? At a, like one and a half percent yield. And then all of a sudden rates get jacked up. Their bonds are useless and they're in a crunch, right? Discount. They can't sell it. Yeah. Or they got to sell yeah, it. Or you got to sell it at a discount. discount and, and now your capital requirements are out of whack. Right. right, or issue more stock and freak everybody out and do another raise. This is what's happening. But it's not well, only, like, it's it's everywhere. I, I can't see it just being contained to this one bank. Like, all those people that may not get paid by the people that can't access their money or lost their money, like, all these payrolls are going to get screwed up. All these service contract invoices, all these supplier invoices, like, all these people that are sitting there waiting for their money, what happens now? And that this is not like a small thing. So they're going to have some kind of a bailout or bail it, I guess, is the next well, thing, right? I always revert back to Abe on, on Twitter, right? Like uh, Global Macro. Yeah. Like he's been calling this for 18 months, mm -hmm. right? Like, and he got We're trying to get him on the show. Yeah. He's like considering I, it, which is nice. I, and and I, I think that that guy is um, he's a brilliant mind. I have a lot of time for him. I know that some people uh, couldn't stand the the bearish nature of his calls, but he called it. He, he definitely called it. called it. And uh, he knows his stuff and he's been around. And um, <laughs> like I said, it's going to be bumpy for a while. And I think uh, they may be the first of many uh, situations like it to go down in that in that. Um, uh, down the state. So let's hope we could get through it and, and learn a few things from it. And uh, hopefully a lot of Canadians can um, weather this uh, tough storm ahead. So I think we... what we've learned is that there's, there's a lot of news out there. And right now, if you're listening and you're out there and there's multiple offers and your realtor is telling you, we had, we had a bunch of offers on a property. I won't, I won't try not to be too specific. So I don't, you know, divulge any information i'm not supposed to but we had a significant amount of offers on a property um in uh in the gta this week and nine out of the x amount of offers were all around the asking price or under and then there was one guy who thought well if i'm competing against that many people then i should be paying x amount over and he did and he blew his wad and uh you know grossly overpaid for the property which we haven't seen for a while Right. Did it appraise? And it just it just got firmed up like you know, firm deal this week, like a couple like this week. So will it appraise? Probably not. But regardless of that, is if you're listening to this, there's more stuff coming. There's more inventory coming. There's more trouble coming. There's people who will be forced to sell. Slow down. Don't be jumping into any situation you don't feel comfortable in comfortable with. Make sure the data supports prices that you're paying. Make sure that you're getting the right advice, that you've got a plan. If you're going an alternative route. Make sure that you have an exit strategy, that this is, you're not just hoping that this is going to work out. You may need to rent, right? Or you may need to sell now. And that refinancing is actually not the best strategy because not only is it going to put more pressure on you in the next year, but it means that you'll have no choice but to 
fold in a year from now. And maybe right now you can walk away and and, and be, you know, somewhat Have back some on track within 12 over. to 24 months. Right. Yeah. So I think that there's yeah. a lot of really good advice that's needed. And um, where, where's best, best place to reach you, Vince, for people? What's uh, Instagram website? Yeah. What's the best I, do place? A lot, I do a lot on Instagram. Uh, I do have a, a TikTok account, but I, I don't use that as much. I think it's a little, a little flaky. Um, Instagram, I do my my weekly show. I'm about 120 episodes in. I do that every Thursday at four. This week, it'll be on Wednesday because I'm going out of town on Thursday. But I try to do that weekly. And um, I try to make it 20, 30 minutes, but it's always 45, 50 in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's Vince G Mortgage on Instagram. Uh, my website's almortgage.ca. Uh, you could email me at vince at almortgage.ca. I'm try I try to get to every email as quickly as I can. DMs, I try to respond promptly and just try to help one person at a time. Um, you know, a lot of people are hurting and and I'm hoping to um, give them a hand and some insight on on how best to deal with it and hopefully get them through it. But uh, sometimes it needs uh, some tough love and Hey, maybe it's best to cut your losses and uh, get out of Dodge and start over. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you uh, being on the show today. And if you're still listening and you haven't liked, commented, shared, subscribed, uh, you know, gotten a poster of Daryl's face on your wall at home, now's your chance. I have one last question. Do you have time? Yeah. What do you think happens? This is for you too, TK, because... Like what happens in the real estate market in the next four weeks between this pause and the next announcement? Like it's been pretty crazy, hasn't it? So what do we what do we forecast between here and then? I'll let TK start off. Safe. Well, I mean, safe. I just look at I always just look at what's the most current trend i mean right now there's pressure on prices because of low inventory and an excess demand so i mean it's to me i would say in the next four weeks we're going to continue on that trend where there's you know not a, not as many people listing their properties still and that people are still hanging on to those suckers for, with dear life and that buyers who are buying are all end users who need a place to live with a roof over their head not speculators not investors and um you know that doesn't sound like that's the doom and gloom uh, storyline yet, but um, it's it's what's going on out there. Um, but people should be more cautious. And I think that the vast majority of people, vast, 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 they're, I got an offer last night under asking, like everybody's more cautious right now. And so if anybody's telling you not to be, then, you know, figure out what's going on and why they're telling you that. Hmm. I'm really interested to see what, what happens in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, this little mini banking crisis south of the border has caused their bond market to to drop in the last couple of days. Uh, the five-year dropped 34 basis points from Monday's high. And um, the two-year dropped about, I think it was just under 30 basis points. So will the banks lower rates in the next week or so? That is, that's the question. I was kind of uh, texting back and forth with Ron Butler, who, who I communicate with quite a bit and, and asked him what he thought and, and he thinks it's going to be a wait and see. Uh, I don't think the banks are going to drop rates because of that, because they need to see if there's more coming. And uh, I think the next week or next week or two is going to be a telling tale on whether or not we're going to see a spring market pricing adjustment with rates to spur some activity. Because at these levels, it's very difficult to qualify people for anything significant to buy, um, you know, million dollar plus properties. So I think the first two weeks are going to tell the tale as to what's going to happen the rest of the month. There we go. Bank rates may come down. That's Let's a, end on that. That's, that's a great a good, thumbnail. That's a great. Uh, that's a great thumbnail. Well, I think we have to say Twice. something about we're going to get through this because I, I was going to count how many times Vince said that the F word, but he said we're going to get through this like 800 times. So I trust him. Optimism. Yeah, I trust him. Yeah. We'll get through it. We're going to we get through. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gaetano, a pleasure. Thank, Thank you me. very much for your time. We know uh, we know you're a busy man. Thank you Keep so much. Good work, guys. I, I appreciate uh, it. I really enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Vince.